Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back, and this is episode 3 of Krieg to OP10, and I just want to say right away, thank you guys so much for the comments. I read every single one of them, and I might not be able to reply to all of them, but I do read them all, and you guys say some pretty positive stuff, and I do appreciate it. Uh, also, some feedback and stuff too, like somebody told me, spend your skill points! I should have done that at the end, but yeah, we're gonna throw them right there. I could do Embrace the Pain for the fire rate, but this doesn't really do a whole lot for early game. And instead, I'd rather take damage and get my action skill back faster if I can, so I can do some melee. Which I have not been doing much of. I know, I know. People are saying, why are you doing no melee? And it's like, I just don't really use it for early game because we're so strong, you know? Uh, so yeah, off to Three Horns Divide. We're going to get our Lisco today. We're going to get our Fastball. And I'm going to show you guys some pretty cool tricks for how to farm that faster. Or actually, coming up, I'm going to show you a really cool trick. For the uh, let's go. A lot of people know about this, but it's still a really, really nice trick if you're trying to get a good let's go. Because the let's go is a very, very strong SMG and it beats out its legendary counterpart, the Emperor. Huge DPS, really good, like, fire rate and everything, just good stats. Uh, actually, a little trick here. We can go over here for a shortcut. It's just a really, really good SMG, easy to get, and I definitely recommend picking it up if you're doing any kind of playthrough. Most people do. I am feeling this shortcut. Hmm. Go up the slope, jump over. There we go. And yeah, it's just a really good SMG overall, and it will carry you for many, many levels. It's almost like a another Herald. You know, like Herald will carry you for like 10 levels. Same with the Let's Go. It can do like easily uh, five to maybe seven levels. Check the vendor, maybe get a, yeah. Actually a Tesla or Fire Burst for early on will be great. I'm gonna take one of those. And that's actually going to speed up the Lilith combat coming up ahead. And what is my shield right now? It's been a couple days. Mm, yeah, we can sell that off and grab some random, like, turtle. I probably shouldn't do turtle, but eh, it's fine. You don't really want to throw away your, um, your HP. So we hit the waypoint, come back here, do a little parkour. Now, you can go around the corner there, but, you know, I just like taking the different path if I can. Like, there's something satisfying about doing... An unintended path, you know? Finding your own path for some shortcut or something. Jump up here. Oop, nope, that's a fail. Try it again. Now, Creek has trouble with grenade jumping. He has heavier uh, weight to him. And the reason why that's a thing is because for melee, they don't want you to, like, get knocked back much when you uh, take enemy attacks. So what they did is made him heavier, and because of that, he can't grenade jump very well. So instead, I like to do this little uh, parkour thing here. You can grenade jump to, like, get up this little area here, but I just like doing the jump. I'll make it way over here. This wall's not real. You can walk through it. And the reason why we're doing this is because a red chest right by spawn. Yeah. And the cool thing is, because we scaled Frostburn, um, this chest is actually 13. Or it should be. Let's see here. Yeah, level 13. So we could farm this for something really, really good. But I'm going to go ahead and skip that because that would be a lot of farming. And that parkour does take a bit, but for my like previous playthroughs, I always do it and farm it for a bit. And you can actually get loot midgets out of it too. So if you're super lucky, you could get like an early, you know, Stormfront drop or Chain Lightning. Or not Chain Lightning, sorry, the, uh, what is it? The Quasar. A lot of cool things there. Do a little skip here. Oh, I missed a ledge. There's a chest up there too. Also level, I think 11 for that. I'm pretty sure it's 11. And yeah, you can skip that combat there and not worry about the enemies really attacking you. I'm mostly doing that because it's kind of a one-life strat. You can take that path to, um, you know, avoid a lot of enemies and make your path a little bit easier. And from here, we are really good on XP. I do need to kill the... I call them bad butts because I don't say bad A's. It's kind of a cuss word and I try not to cuss on my channel so we can appeal to a wider audience out there. And a lot of people respect that. Oh, I never showed the trick. <laughs> Alright, hold on. Let me go back to spawn. I completely got sidetracked. Okay, we're back at spawn, and now we're going to do the trick. So, what you're going to do is leave the map, and then turn around and come back in. So, each time you do this, what's going to happen is it's going to duplicate the Lisco. Or, you're entering the map, so the game's like, oh, I got to spawn the Lisco. And you leave and come back in. The map's like, oh, wait, I got to spawn the Lisco. And does it over and over. You do want to wait a second before you travel out of the map, though, because you have to wait for the item to actually spawn in. Uh, if you turn around and do it like fast like this, it's not actually going to count, so don't do it like that. Just wait, you know, maybe a second or two. I usually wait for the save icon to go away, but something like that should be fine. 
So we'll do one more here. We don't need the stack list goes that much, but you know, you might be able to roll a matching grip or a nice prefix like stopping for damage or flying for fire rate and bullet speed. Um, for those who don't know, like flying is a prefix that a lot of people go on for the, uh, the Sandhawk. You don't actually only get bullet speed. People go for it because, you know, the bullets are a lot faster. You also get fire rate, and that's a huge deal for um, the Sandhawk and for the Lisko too. All right, because we already ran this, let me, you know, cut forward for you. All right, we're just about there, and as you can see, that is what, like five of them, I think? Uh, we're just going to pick them all up and see which one we got as a good rolls, or got as good rolls. Krieg, you are, oh, we got tackled by a spider ant, so now we look tall. Okay, this one has matching grip, but no prefix bonus. So smooth is going to be your grip bonus, like or just like what the grip is. So doll is called smooth, but no like actual extra bonus. Uh, Malawan's your burst fire. You can see here they're both burst fire. Band is called reserve, which is no bonus too. And yeah, it looks like we didn't roll any prefixes for extra bonuses, but we did get matching grip for more mag and more fire rate. So we are going to put that on. And somebody asked last video, what do you mean by matching grip? I glanced over that, I'm sorry. So, matching grip means you're matching the grip here. You can see it's doll with the manufacturer, which is doll. So that is a doll grip on doll manufacturer, which we call matching grip. Now, something like this, this is a Malawan grip on a doll manufacturer, not matching grip. And like I said before, you don't always need to go for a matching grip and some items are actually better without matching grip, but we'll get to that when we get to like an item like that. I don't wanna, um, you know, start naming off items here and confuse people. A lot of people did mention the morning voice thing was like, I sound depressed and sad. I promise I'm not. I just uh, wake up in the morning and record the video and I'm, you know, still waking up. So this time it's a little bit different. I'm actually recording the night before Monday, so Sunday night. And I'm more awake, you know, and I'm uh, my most energized. So I feel like maybe this might be better for the series if I record the night before. So I can have my um, energy levels up for this. All right, I do want to kill this guy because he does give a lot of XP. I right, just burn that. Whatever, it's fine. We'll be okay. Actually, you know what we should do? We should get a melee kill for the HP back and then stagger that guy with the throw. And then we'll do circle strats and finish him off. Yeah, he's just staggering over and over. Poor guy. Melee is so, so good. I, I know I say it's so good, but like for real, early game melee is just insane. And I know it doesn't look like a lot, but we're fighting a, you know, bad butt enemy. Like I said, I call them bad butts. And yeah, it, it does pretty good work. Also, on the way here, we are going to open a few containers that actually can spawn loot midgets. The chance is very, very low. It's, I think, 5%, I'm pretty sure. But you never know. Could get lucky. Looks like we're 5 out of these 7 signs. We didn't skip any. Sometimes if you take different paths over there, you can actually skip over the waypoint. Or the uh, signs. I've done that before and it's really annoying because you realize, oh, I got to go all the way back for that. Oops. And we'll go ahead and grab this chest too because it is level 13. Oh, hey, what do you know? And he's got a torpedo. I don't want that. Ooh, those things hurt. The splash damage. This jump is really tricky. It almost seems like they didn't put the box out enough to make this jump. Like it's barely makeable, but you can make that jump. And we'll catch on fire here. Not a big deal. And maybe another loot midget? Not this time. And a bunch of nothing. Whatever. Not a big deal. Now, it's not going to be every box that can have loot midgets. I'm only opening the ones that actually can spawn loot midgets. And you might be wondering, how do you know which ones do? Oh, that hurts. Hold on. Let me do this. Ah, he got me. It's all good. We got our beautiful Esco for second wins. When you play the game enough, you notice like what boxes spawn loot midgets over time. And also I've looked at the map editor and I've seen a bunch of, uh, they're called like loot midget containers. They're different from like normal containers. I I've seen which ones can spawn and which can't. Like there's a bunch over at the map. What is that map called? With brick. Thousand cuts. There's a bunch of thousand cuts that actually spawn a bunch of loot midgets. No joke. There's like 30, 40 crates over there. There's a lot. So as we're waiting for dialogue, we are going to be like doing the extra stuff that could, but not always, benefit the playthrough. I uh, like, you know, trying to farm some loot midgets. Watch out for the fire. And we can't do a skip here, so you got to jump the corner and kind of do a C jump here. 
don't jump it too tight otherwise you'll bump the wall and fall on the spikes and that would be a pretty bad time let's proceed forward here and we're gonna check on the mobbing yeah we bought that um what is it that tesla i'm gonna put that on for the mobbing up ahead i'm gonna buy a little hp too it will help for normal mode, I don't mind spending money on, like, ammo and HP, but once you get the UVHM, it's like you gotta be a little more careful because stuff costs a lot of money. Jump in the cutscene and enemies will try to shoot me, but hey, I'm not there anymore because they despawn you for the cutscene. Huh. The cool thing here is there's a trick I learned recently. I showed off on episode 2 the free scroll with the um, the scooter skip. We're going to do the same thing for Lilith, and it's going to skip a bunch of dialogue. Yeah, it's a really, really nice trick. For those who don't have a free scroll mouse, if you're on PC and have a mouse, not free scroll, you can still do the free scrolling like tricks, but you have to, um, you have to scroll down really hard, and hopefully you can get that to work. But it's easier with a free scroll. So I put my U's on free scroll down. Mouse wheel down. And we're going to free scroll Lilith here and interact over and over. And she's going to skip all of her dialogue. Combat's going to start right away. And that's going to be really good because we can skip, yeah, just waiting around for all that tedious dialogue you've heard thousands of times for the playthrough. And we don't really want that. And you can see here the uh, Teslas and like Firebirds and stuff for early game work really well for combat. You already killed all those guys up there, like, effortlessly. Not for you. Oh, we got stuck. Oop, never mind. Thank you, Lilith, for once. I could do melee, but I kind of want to save it for if I actually need it. Go over here. Do that, pick up whatever. Awesome. Yeah, the cool thing about the uh, scroll down is you can, like, pick up the ammo before it even, like, pops up. Super fast couple of those that should be good and now is a good time for melee yeah we gotta heal beautiful not too bad so far oh sorry <laughs> actually no i'm not sorry you've ruined a lot of my uh my runs before i've fallen into fight for your life like this and she'll steal the kill a lot of times that can't happen all right, check this out. You can stand right here before the bad butt spawn. And this guy's going to do this. Watch. He's like, hey, I'm trying to pathfind, but I can't. So it's a free kill. Go ahead and take that. Dude over here is fighting Lilith, unfortunately. It would have been nice if he chased so I don't have to run all the way over here, but not a big deal. Please don't down me. Thank you. Awesome. 94 HP. Look at that. Okay, and now for the free scroll down again on Lilith. This will skip the um, dialogue here too, and we can turn in the mission right away. Nice little skip. And right there you can see it's level 13. We just got it, which means we can get a 13 fastball. Uh, if you hit 13 after you turn in the mission, that's fine. Like when you turn in the mission, like gain 13, that's fine. But if you are still level 12 after turning in the mission, then the fastball is going to be 12. So you want to make sure you hit 13 when you turn in the mission or before that. Otherwise, you're gonna miss out on a high level fastball. All right, let's put you back to E. Awesome. And yeah, it is time for the fastball. Let's get it. And now for the fastball, I do wanna get at least explosive or shock. And shock is not bad in normal because you don't have a shock on flesh penalty. Normally when you use shock on flesh, you um have a damage reduction, which is unfortunate for TVHM and UVHM. And OP levels. But for normal mode, it doesn't matter. You can hit a flesh target with shock and it will do full damage. Got something new for you. Take that. Ever and then if you get a fire one, that would be nice too, because we can use that for like super fast, easy, bad mall farming. But we don't need fire. It would be nice if we get it, but we don't really need it. And then corrosive, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Because like shock or explosive will one shot loaders. So we don't have to worry about that. Bull farming can be quite tedious, and I cannot wait to show you the uh, the fast route on how to farm it faster. 
I don't know about you guys, but when I farm bull, like, it's a 1 in 10 drop chance, right? It doesn't feel like 1 in 10. It feels like, for me, maybe 1 in 20. I'm not joking. Alright, we're done with you. Let's drop you off. Back to Skyrocket. Throw one of those. That should be the kill. Yep. And, of course, we never get it on the mission kill. This might actually be the mission in which I never get a drop during the kill. Uh, whenever I do, like, missions where, I don't know, uh, Lynchwood, where you kill, um, what's his face? Mad Dog? I always get the, what do you call it? Madhouse. Every time. But this mission? Nope. You gotta farm it. Unfortunate. Grab the anchor. Oh, this is the weird quest, by the way, too. There's extra echoes around the map. Like, there's one that flies through the wall over there. Watch one of my 10 things video I posted recently, and you'll see that um, shown off. It it's such a weird thing. And then if you go to Three Horns Divide, you can find one of the echoes in a crater. Like, a completely different map, right? So weird. It's almost like this quest was built and then, like, went through changes, and then they were left in there and didn't get edited uh, out. All right, slowly right off. Beautiful. Uh, if you drive off, the racks come out of you, which is really annoying, so want to be careful with that. Also, somebody pointed out, this is smart, I never thought about this. During day one, I showed that the chest, or was it day two? Day two, yeah. During day two, I showed this chest in the porta potty is level 11. Look at it now. 13. I think these chests are scaled to the bull quest. Because, I mean, you get the echo right here, so they might as well, you know, scale the mission with the chest. But it doesn't make sense. Why is the porta potty also level 11? Which should be 13 now because we scaled it. It almost makes you wonder if, like, the bull quest in the past was going to have, like, an echo over there, but it got changed out. But they left the uh, scaling for the porta potty. I don't know. It is interesting, though. Makes you think about it. How many things would have made it into the game but got changed or removed? There's a lot of stuff. Hyperius didn't have a helmet when um, he was first made, or there was those like wisp pets you can get in the Halloween DLC. You can like mod them in, but you can't actually get them legit. A lot of weird things. There we go. I don't know why I killed him, but whatever. Maybe get the catch. Beautiful. So quit. And we are going to speed farm the fastball with a really cool uh, strat. I've shown it off in a playthrough video before, but I don't do it as often as I should. Actually, I found a better way to optimize it a little bit faster. And I'll be showing that off when we uh, get to that point. What does Arlos go? 41-2? Eh, not terrible. Matching grip is nice, but I mean, it would have been nice to roll damage on it too. Okay, we have three iridium. I'm not going to worry about upgrades. I would have preferred to upgrade my... Uh, Let's go, but whatever. Right here, I'm trying to do a jump, which is really hard on Zero and Krieg because they're so tall. So easy to bump your head there. But you can make that jump. Basically, you jump from the box to the uh, water heater, maybe, and then to the roof. But, eh, it doesn't matter. This thing right here, look at this. You get caught. If you play on 60 FPS or higher, you get caught here. If you're on 30, you can make it over. And that happens for a lot of spots in the game, too. Pretty annoying. All right, Lilith, what are you doing? You take that. Thanks. And let's go farm. I'm really hoping we have good luck because, yeah, this farm is never good for me. And you definitely want the fastball on Krieg. I mean, you want it on anybody, but on Krieg especially, you definitely want it. And I already went to the wrong map. Oops. We're going to turn around and this time go to Frostburn. Because if you spawn at the Frostburn door, you can skip the warp tunnel animation, you know, the blue tunnel here. Uh, like you have a three horns divide and then you can do a shorter path and it saves actually i think like three to five seconds depending on the uh the speed you do it so basically we spawn there go over here jump here go around the corner avoid the combat and then we're gonna fall down here and grab a car and actually if you walk off this or run off this you can land on top to get it a little bit faster see that look down grab a car and then we're gonna boost over here Go on the right rock and warp out the car. Up and over. Oop. And pull the Lisko out. Shoot at the uh, bull. And then he's going to chase you. You throw a skyrocket. And that's the kill. Easily, you know, maybe, what, 20 to 25 seconds? Really fast farm. And now let's do it at full speed here. Try to go fast here. 
So do the jump. And once you have like kill skills, you know, like uh, if you're playing Onslaught and stuff with Axton or uh, Salvador Bust that can't slow down, you can actually move faster through that combat and then get up here even faster. But Krieg doesn't really have much speed unless you're doing the, the melee, which is unfortunate. I wish he had a little more movement speed, but what can you do? Please? Oh. All right, this could be a lot of farming, so I am going to cut forward and show you when I get the drop. Uh -huh. A whole level off a of bull. Got bigger. Bad luck. All right, keep it going. By the way, for those wondering, I am using my axe here for the speed. Don't worry. You troll. <laughs> oh, I really thought we got it there. I saw like a little uh, line that looked like the fastball, but nope. Keep it going. Wow. Another whole level. <sighs> bad, bad, bad luck. But it's not a big deal, actually, because bulls are really good XP farm, and we do need to farm XP, so... It's not a big deal that we're not getting it right away, but... I gotta be, like, maybe 20... Maybe 30 runs in? I'm gonna say 20. I haven't been counting. We're quite a few runs in. Keep it going. Level 16! Alright, this might be on par or more than my worst RNG ever on the sky. Yeah, we've probably done, like, 50... Possibly 60 kills. I've been farming for 20 minutes and then 20 second runs. Yeah, that's about 60 kills, huh? Is that math? I don't know. All right, let's put a point into a thrill of the kill. We definitely want that. And let's keep farming. You know, one good thing about grindy runs is that you do it so much that you perfect your run, like the route there. Also, thinking about it now, I will add the run counter in the corner for future runs. I feel like tracking it is kind of important because when we're doing jump cuts, it does, you know, fly by fast and i'm gonna show you guys the actual run numbers <gasps> oh it's corrosive oh it exists all right well we can't take corrosive like i said because it doesn't work for the things i want to use it for coming up and this is a key item we have to get the right one i'm gonna keep farming yeah okay no joke two runs later it always happens when I farm bull, we get nothing for an extremely long time, and then suddenly at the end, after getting our first drop, the second drop happens, and third drop happens, like, shortly after. Alright, please be at least 7,000. So we got the third best. Eh. I mean, that's fine, that'll work. But, yeah. Whatever. What can you do? Alright, we can get out of here. So, from here, we are so set for bad maw. Normally what I would be at is around level 15, maybe 14, 15 for Bad Maw. But considering we got so much XP, we are a little bit over leveled for Bad Maw. That is a good thing because we do want to farm Bad Maw now for some XP. And for Bad Maw, a lot of people, or at least in the past, people would go to level 15 and then move on. And then over time, people farmed him a little bit more, got to level 16, and then moved on through Bloodshot and stuff. And then they realized, you know, Bad Maul's a really good XP farm. Maybe we should farm him more. And most people today farm him until 17, and then move on to uh, Bloodshot. But me, I'm a little bit more crazy after that farm, for sure. I like to farm to level 18. Yeah. I don't have to, but I like to because level 18 is a nice level to get to in which you have a high level and over level the other enemies in the game. And then also we are going to be doing the Wham Bam farm, which is a very popular farm after finishing Bad Maw farming. And Wham Bam is going to give us a lot of upgrades, you know, finally our first relics and uh, a lot of other cool things. All right, so right there we did hit the save into the cutscene by driving into the save station, which means you could save quit and skip the cutscene, which is very, very nice. Now we'll talk to Ellie, save quit again. Now we'll skip the dialogue and we can go straight for the cars right after. And if we're lucky, we can get a Gwen's head, but it's not really needed because Harold. And of course, the Harold can hit through Bad Maul's shield, which is very, very nice. But it won't matter at all because we do have the fastball and that thing is going to destroy him. So cars in this game are very weird. If you push at them, they're programmed to like drive away. I know, big surprise, right? So what you want to do is approach the car slowly so they drive slow and then you don't have to worry about like chasing them far. 
And for example, this guy, he's gonna try to go this way, but if I cut him off, he's gonna take a right and go into the rock here. Or I guess he decided to turn around, but yeah, you can kind of control where the cars are gonna go and use that to your benefit. Also, cars in this game don't have good scaling, especially in UVHM, so they die really, really fast. All right, part number four. And the final one's gonna be out in the field here, or in the desert, I should say. Uh, He's always hard to find. Like, sometimes he gets stuck. There he is. Go for you. And then after we get this, we can go for a save quit and get out of here. This map is really short for the most part. But you do come back and visit it quite a bit. But for the story, you come in, get some parts, you're out. I really wish there was more to do in the dust, though. Outside of the uh, side missions. But overall, it's a pretty cool map. I like it. Talk to you, and while waiting, we'll grab the dollar over here. Fix the car up. And as soon as you see the check mark there, you can just open this and get your vehicle right away. You don't have to wait for Ellie to come over and, like, tap the machine and stuff. We are ready for bad mall farming, but actually, before we do that, there is one more thing we need to do, though. That is get the slag pistol from Marcus. Normally, for early game, you don't get your slag until, like, way later. But the Marcus mission for the, um, you know, learning the elements, he will teach you how to use them and give you a slag pistol. And with that in mind, we can use that to slag bad maw and one-shot him with the fastball. Now, if we would have rolled a fire fastball, we can one-shot him without slag. But we didn't get lucky, so we are going to have to get the slag pistol. And then we can slag him up and go for the one-shots with the fastball. And it will save ammo, but if you don't want to use the slag pistol, you can always um, throw two fastballs. Up for you. Now, we don't have to kill these guys, but I kind of want to. And we're definitely not going to melee bad maw because that shield bash does a lot of damage. Hit the trigger. And let's go. You can see there, I don't know if you guys saw it, but you can see the axe through the cutscene when I threw it. A lot of the cutscenes in the game are rendered in real time. Or, like, within the game's engine. It's not like a video file being thrown over. But there are some that are video files. Such as, you know, meeting Scooter and he says, Are you from Hyperion? That's a video file. Or, like, the Tina DLC opening cutscene, too. Alright, fast. Ball. Just like that. And then, Corrosive would not be ideal for farming him, but you can farm him with a Corrosive one, too, if you want to. Alright, we're gonna stand here, and we can get around the gate a little bit faster. Comes down. And you'll see here, there's a wall in front of me. I can't, like, push until it, like, checks off. So, yeah, it's a nice little, uh, speedrun trick. And some people might think I'm trying to speedrun or trying to go fast. Yes, I'm trying to go fast. It's just how I play. It's just a natural way to play. And after you play the game a lot, you want to find the most efficient and fun ways to get through the game. And take the uh, fastest strats. Alright, Sanctuary. Get that mission. Actually, we were just talking about it. The Marcus uh, cutscene here, where he shoots the guy in the leg. That is a video file. So, because we have the video files turned off for... What is it? No movies or whatever for Steam. Um, he's not going to have that cutscene, as you can see. Turn that in. We're going to wait for him to say part of the or whatever and then pick up the echo. And I will skip the rest of the dialogue. And then from here, we'll put on the fire pistol and kind of speed run this mission. So, fire, shock, corrosive, and then we get slag. And don't turn that in. Keep the slag one. Now, this pistol is not really that great for slag. The slag chance is very, very low. But it's literally the only early slag you can really get for the game. We don't have access to the Grog or the Slaga or any good slagging weapon yet. Uh, let's go back to Bloodshot. I guess you could go to the Waddle Gobbler DLC and get the Slag Pistol out of the oven, but it's not really worth it because it's still a pistol. Also, cool thing here before we do this farm. Check it out. 200 ammo, right? We're going to shoot a few. Now we're down to 192. We're going to save quit. And check this out. We're going to jump back in the game. And something weird is going to happen. If I look at my ammo now, 200. So, mission weapons. A weapon you get during a mission like this or the Grog Nozzle. Um, some other things. When you spawn in the game, it gives you a free 30 ammo. So, during this farm, you don't actually have to like go find pistol ammo at all. 
You're just gonna get it for free. Uh, let me show the let's goes and stuff. Hold on. Kind of clear the backpack a little bit. Also, do we have more iridium yet? We have nine. I did get a little bit from um, Bad Maw, which is nice. Uh, do I want to keep you? Maybe. Because that can't be used for quitting Crystalisk. I'm going to sell the corrosive one. I'm going to pretend I didn't get it. And what are you? Three grenades. It does have bloodbath, but early bloodbath for normal mode is really not that strong. I mean, it's not bad, but we don't have a good way to stack. So we're not going to worry about that. And from here, we're going to take off all of our weapons except for the slag pistol. So that when we save quit, we're going to have it in our hands. We'll spawn in, shoot a few times, wait for purple, fastball. You don't even have to change your aim. Like, look where you're looking when you spawn in. And then just do that. And now I could go over there and pick up the iridium he drops or the weapons. But we're going to be getting upgrades right after this farm. So there's no point to really pick up the weapons. And the iridium is nice. Oh, I said quit too early. The iridium is nice, but I don't like running all the way over there for this farm. Because getting to level 18 does take a little bit. This makes it so much faster. So I'm going to go ahead and grind this to level 18 and we will be back. Actually, hold on. Let's get one level here. Ooh, we rolled a really bad parts on this. Level up, dude. Beautiful. Keep it going. Hold on. I just remembered. When you run out of grenades, turn around and go back into Bloodshot. And you're going to find two ammo chests right to your right side. We're going to open those. We didn't get a whole lot, so we're going to save quit and grab it again. Don't push forward too much, otherwise you're going to hit the fast travel and spawn there. And you don't want that. Longer animation. There we go. And now we'll go back and finish the farm. Final farm here. Let's finish it off. And level up. There it is. Beautiful. Level 18. Definitely a lot faster than Bull, I will say. For the skill points, we are going to put them into... Well, we don't have an explosive fastball, so that's not going to help a whole lot. Light Diffuse is fun early game, but it's not ideal. Let's go ahead and go over here to Bloodfilled Guns. Yeah, I kind of boost up our mag if we can get a couple hits in. Uh, that'll be nice for some stuff. Also, the reason why we put only one point here is because the overkill damage you do will give you 50% of HP back. And 50% of a one-shot kill with the fastball is literally all of your HP. In fact, let me go ahead and show that off real quick over here. We're going to take some lethal damage and drop to low HP. And then we're going to throw one fastball. One. And watch my HP. So we're taking damage. And we're full. They give it like an on-demand healing at the click of a button. It's really, really nice to have. As for that, I think we're going to call it there for today. We got a lot done. Well, it doesn't feel like we got a lot done, but we did a lot of farming. Also, one more thing before we go, you guys can leave comments uh, down below if you guys want to recommend a name for Krieg. I just remembered somebody recommended that, and I think it's a great idea. So if you have a cool name in mind, put it in the comments below, and if you see one that you like in the comments, then thumbs it up and get it to the top. And whatever has the most recommendations or thumbs up, I will go with that. As long as it isn't bad or, you know, vulgar or anything like that. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, then please be sure to leave a like, because that'd be awesome. And if you really enjoyed it and want to see some more Borderlands content, then be sure to sub. You guys have an awesome Monday, and I will see you tomorrow. Peace out.